White's Tree Frog. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, http colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org. White's Tree Frog, Green Tree Frog, or Dumpy Tree Frog, Latoria cerulea, is a species of tree frog native to Australia and New Guinea, with introduced populations in New Zealand and the United States. The species belongs to the genus Latoria. It is physiologically similar to some species of the genus, particularly the magnificent tree frog, Latoria splendida, and the giant tree frog, Latoria infrafrenata. White's tree frog is a large species compared with most Australian frogs, reaching 10 centimetres in length. The average lifespan of the frog in captivity, about 16 years, is long in comparison with most frogs. White's tree frogs are docile and well suited to living near human dwellings. They are often found on windows or inside houses, eating insects drawn by the light. Due to its physical and behavioural traits, White's tree frog has become one of the most recognisable frogs in its region, and is a popular exotic pet throughout the world. The skin secretions of the frog have antibacterial and antiviral properties that may prove useful in pharmaceutical preparations. Section 1. Taxonomy The common name of the species, White's tree frog, is in honour of the first person to describe the species, John White. White's tree frog was the first Australian frog scientifically classified. The species was originally called the blue frog, Rana cerulea. Although White's tree frog is green, the original specimens White sent to England were damaged by the preservative and appeared blue. This is because the colour of the frog is caused by blue and green pigments covered in a yellow layer. The preservative destroyed the yellow layer and left the frog with a blue appearance. The specific epithet, cerulea, which is Latin for blue, has remained the same. The frog is also known more simply as the green tree frog. However, that name is often given to the most common large green tree frog in a region, for example the American green tree frog, Hylocinaria. White's tree frog is similar to, and sometimes confused with, the magnificent tree frog, Latoria splendida, which inhabits only northwestern Australia and can be distinguished by the presence of large paratoids and rostral glands on the head. The giant tree frog, Latoria infrafrenata, is also sometimes confused with White's tree frog. The main difference is a distinct white stripe along the edge of the lower jaw of the giant tree frog, which is not present in White's tree frog. Section 2. Distribution White's tree frog is native to northern and eastern regions of Australia and to southern New Guinea. Distribution is limited mostly to areas with a warm, wet, tropical climate. Eastern Australia, although cool in winter, also hosts the species. It is found in the southern Australian state of Victoria, but the frog cannot survive southern Victoria's cold winters and is therefore restricted to the north. In New Guinea, White's tree frog is restricted to the drier southern region. Its range spans from Irian Jaya to Port Moresby and is most abundant on Daru Island. There have been isolated records in northern New Guinea, however this is thought to have been through introduction by humans. The species has been introduced to both the United States and New Zealand. In the United States it is restricted to two regions within Florida, where it was possibly introduced through the pet trade. Only small populations have been found in Florida, and it is unknown whether they have caused any ecological damage as an invasive species. In New Zealand, a population was once present, however there have been no sightings since the 1950s. Section 3. Physical Description White's tree frog can grow up to 10 centimetres, 4 inches, in length. Its colour depends on the temperature and colour of the environment, ranging from brown to green. The ventral surface is white. The frog occasionally has small, white, irregularly shaped spots on its back, up to 5 millimetres in diameter, which increase in number with age. The frog has large discs on the end of its toes, of about 5 millimetres in diameter at maturity. These help the frog's grip while climbing and allow them to climb vertically on glass. The eyes are golden and have horizontal irises, typical of the Latoria genus. 
The fingers are about one-third webbed, and the toes nearly three-quarters webbed. The tympanum, a skin membrane similar to an eardrum, is visible. The tadpole's appearance changes throughout its development. The length of the species' tadpoles ranges from 8.1 mm, once hatched, to 44 mm. They are initially mottled with brown, which increases in pigmentation to green or brown during development. The underside begins dark and then lightens, eventually to white in adults. The eggs are brown, in a clear jelly, and are 1.1 to 1.4 mm in diameter. Although frogs have lungs, they absorb oxygen through their skin, and for this to occur efficiently the skin must be moist. A disadvantage of moist skin is that pathogens can thrive on it, increasing the chance of infection. To counteract this, frogs secrete peptides that destroy these pathogens. The skin secretion from White's tree frog contains serins, a group of peptides with antibacterial and antiviral properties. It also contains serolins, which have the same physiological effects as CCK8, a digestive hormone and hunger suppressant. Several peptides from the skin secretions of White's tree frog have been found to destroy HIV without harming healthy T cells. Section 4 Ecology and Behaviour White's tree frogs are very docile. They are nocturnal and come out in early evenings to call in spring and summer and hunt at night. During the day they find cool, dark and moist areas to sleep. During winter White's tree frogs do not call and are not usually seen. Depending on their location, White's tree frogs occupy various habitats. Typically they are found in the canopy of trees near a still water source. However, they can survive in swamps, among the reeds, or in grasslands in cooler climates. White's tree frogs are well known for inhabiting water sources inside houses, such as sinks or toilets. They can also be found on windows eating insects. They will occupy tanks or cisterns, downpipes or downspouts, and gutters, as these have a high humidity and are usually cooler than the external environment. The frogs are drawn to downpipes and tanks during mating season, as the fixtures amplify their call. The species' call is a low, slow, croak, 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 repeated many times. For most of the year, they call from high positions such as trees and gutters. During mating season, the frogs descend, although remaining slightly elevated, and call close to still water sources, whether temporary or permanent. Like many frogs, White's tree frogs call not only to attract a mate. They have been observed calling to advertise their location outside the mating season, usually after rain, for reasons that are uncertain to researchers. They will emit a stress call whenever they are in danger, such as when predators are close or when a person steps on a log in which a frog resides. The species' diet consists mainly of insects and spiders, but can include smaller frogs and even small mammals. Frog teeth are not suited to cutting up prey, so the prey must fit inside the mouth of the frog. Many frogs propel their sticky tongues at prey. The prey sticks and is consumed. White's tree frog will use this technique for smaller prey, however for larger prey it pounces, then forces the prey into its mouth with its hands. The frog has few native predators, among them snakes and a few species of lizards and birds. Since the European settlement of Australia, non-native predators have been introduced, primarily dogs and cats. The species has an average life expectancy in captivity of 16 years, but some have been known to live for over 20 years, which is long for a frog. The average life expectancy in the wild is lower than in captivity, due to predation. Section 5. Reproduction Prior to the mating season in late spring to summer, the male white's tree frog develops a black nuptial pad on the inner surface of the thumb. This aids amplexus by allowing the male to continue a grip on its mate for the duration of amplexus. The male calls individually to attract a female, and the two typically meet at a still water source. During amplexus, the male mounts the female. The female then expels her eggs at such a speed that the sperm is forced into the egg. 
A large spawn of about 200 to 300 eggs is left in the water, approximately a half metre from the frogs. The eggs sink and attach themselves to submerged objects. The two frogs can remain in amplexus for about two days, during which the process is repeated many times, resulting in the laying of an average of 2,000 to 3,000 eggs. An egg hatches three days after its laying. The water must be 28 to 38 degrees Celsius and 5 to 50 centimetres deep for the eggs and tadpoles to survive. Metamorphosis takes between two and three months and sexual maturation about two years. Section 6. Conservation Status Australian law gives protected status to White's tree frog, along with all Australian fauna, under the Federal Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999. Much of the White's tree frog's natural habitat has been destroyed. Also, some of the frogs have been found infected with chytrid fungus, causing tetrudiomycosis. These two factors associated with the general decline in frog populations in Australia threaten to reduce the population of White's tree frog. However, because of the long life expectancy of this species, any effects of a reduced reproduction rate will take longer to spot than they would in a species with a shorter life expectancy. Section 7. As a pet. White's tree frog is one of the most popular pet frogs throughout the world. Its docile nature, often cartoon-like appearance and long life expectancy make it an attractive choice for exotic pet owners. It is also one of the easier frogs to care for. Their diet is broad and they have a strong resistance to disease. One problem commonly associated with keeping this species as a pet is overfeeding. White's tree frogs tend to become obese if overfed. In the wild, exertion of energy is required for a frog to capture its prey. However, in captivity, they are usually given live feed in a confined space. This lessens the activity needed for feeding, resulting in weight gain. An overweight member of the species will deposit fat layers over the top of the head and body, giving it a dumpy appearance. For notes, references and external links, refer to the original text of this English Wikipedia article. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation Licence, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.